Hi, my name is Yannick Brisbois, and I'm the team lead for the Carleton Planetary Robotics team. We are a team of undergraduate students from Carleton University in Ottawa, Ontario, with the goal of designing and building competitive Mars rovers. I would like to now introduce to you this year's rover, Sammy. Our chassis platform has moved to a six-wheeled rocker bogey, which will increase stability while traversing rough terrain. The rocker bogey is constructed using COTS rectangular carbon fiber tubing and milled aluminum hubs, with the two legs connected using a transfer bar. Sammy's drivetrain consists of six VEX bag motors, each coupled to a 100 to 1 gear reduction and a custom quadrature encoder. This year we've begun to design custom 3D printed TPU wheels, which will provide us with a lightweight yet flexible rim. This will be combined with a TPE tread, which will provide traction over a simulated Mars environment. The electronics are separated into two modular boxes. The electronics box, which houses all of our computation, motor control, power distribution, regulation, and telemetry sensors. The battery box houses our batteries, emergency stop system, relay, and trunk power fuse. The electronics box is designed with a standardized 5 cm by 5 cm grid and cutouts to allow for easy repairs, rearrangements, and expansion of electronics inside. Custom PCBs interface with any commercial electronics and feature status LEDs for fast identification of electrical issues. H6 is powered with last year's 24 volt 30 amp hour battery with a brand new emergency stop system. This new e-stop is equipped with under voltage lockout and a dead man switch for faster and safer rover recovery during testing. We've also integrated a bypass for the dead man switch for competition time. These changes make H6 CPRT's safest, most reliable rover to date. We will be using a 900 megahertz omnidirectional antenna based on last year's design due to its success at last year's competition. This year, the system has been optimized by using better suited antennas. With the 900 megahertz link, we will be able to talk through large terrain, such as hills and rocks, that would normally interfere with a higher frequency signal. The mechanical arm consists of four joints capable of lifting and maneuvering five kilograms of mass at full extension. The motors are connected to harmonic or strain wave gears, allowing for a high torque output as well as minimal backlash. The four degrees of freedom of the mechanical arm coupled with the two degrees of freedom of the end effector will allow us to use inverse kinematics, which will be vital for tasks that require high precision such as typing or using a screwdriver. This year's end effector was designed with precision in mind. The custom gearing system was machined of aluminum stock for a compact yet strong design. The end effector has 180 degree pitch control as well as 360 degree continuous rotation. The grippers of the end effector have been 3D printed of a special carbon fiber filament for its high strength and low mass properties. Last year we used OpenCV to detect and avoid obstacles as well as locating the tennis ball. This seemed to work in a lab environment but failed to adapt to the unpredictable nature of the real world. This year, we plan to use a neural network as an end-to-end -end solution. This will allow us to generalize safe driving conditions, as well as how to avoid hazards. As a safety measure, we have built a secondary system to analyze the ground plane ahead of the rover. Knowing the size of our rover, we can determine if any patch of ground is large enough to fit on, vetoing any decisions by the neural network if necessary. We are also using deep learning to locate the tennis ball using the yellow algorithm. This will allow us to generalize what a tennis ball looks like, allowing us to deal with different color backgrounds, debris on the tennis ball, or even if the tennis ball is partially obstructed. For the science mission, we have built a Raman spectrometer to detect the presence of carotenoids, pigments that are widely considered to be strong indicators of life. A 532 nanometer laser is used to excite the sample, and the peaks in the resulting spectra form a unique signature that can be used to identify the biomarker. A motor and ball screw are used to lower the probe to the ground so that measurements can be taken in situ. As the weather starts to get a bit warmer in Ottawa, we're thrilled to be moving out of our build phase and into our mission planning and operator training. Our operations team is composed of specialists trained in a single role, such as locomotion, end effector, or science. During operations training, we'll be conducting mock missions with simulated failure modes, such as losing a motor, various sensors, or communications. This gives our team experience troubleshooting in the field and allows us to develop backups and adaptations for mission success prior to competition. <laughs>